I hope you're all still fine. Who forgot their key card this morning? I should have an example with me. Card like this? Anyone? Can't happen to me. I got mine implanted. There's an NFC RFID microchip in my left palm. I can open a door like this, like you know from your office maybe, or uh, uh, from your hotel. It stores 800 bytes of Bitcoin wallets, passwords, medical data, what the cyborg of today needs. When I showed it to my wife, she said, are you crazy? Such an operation on the human body, who is going to take it out? You, my dear, of course. I really wanted to experience what it is to have a chip like this. Pets have them already for some time in the neck, you might know. So I wanted to see eye to eye with my dog, if I had one. <laughs> I wanted to experience the phenomenology of being part human and part machine. And if you believe this is crazy, let me tell you about a little computer, the smallest computer in Austria, the size of a coin for babies. Through an incision in the scalp, it's moved over the, uh, over the bone and connected via 26 wires to the brain, a so-called cochlear implant. You see them fr quite frequently. It allows deaf children to hear. What sounded as a horror story, and that's the way I told it, suddenly makes sense. Of course, if we are talking about technological, digital, medical development, some horror stories, some benign stories might turn out to be horror. Who could know? If I'm old and going to hear badly, my wife says it's already the case. <laughs> Am I going to have one of these greasy earring aids? No. I'm going to have an implant like this. It's going to be safe and easy and cheap. And Will I use a headphone then? I don't think so. I got mine already implanted. There is even a chip for consumers. It's not bigger like this. It does a DNA analysis of your biome, if you spit on it, within 19 minutes. 90 minutes. It can do a COVID test, for example. Quite soon, they are going to be really small they're going to fit into a teeth. I have to admit, not all of my teeth are natural anymore, so there's already space there to fit them in. And the energy, the electric energy, will come from my chewing movements, and it might do 10,000 DNA analyses per minute. What happens if it finds an unknown DNA pattern, probably dangerous. It's going to do what a good, any good antivirus software does, as you know from your PC, it connects to an antivirus database and asks it if it's dangerous. And if it turns out to be dangerous, I'm very privately going to ask my insurance, what are you willing to pay me? I mean, if I quarantine myself. Wouldn't that be much cheaper than anything that we have right now? If enough of us had something in their teeth, which pandemic, which future pandemic could stand any chance? And if it's too strong for you, why not integrate it into your private thermometer? Uh, if you know your temperature is rising, you can just add on a DNA analysis. I call this thought experiment, no transhumanism is no solution either. These thought experiments, I use them to explore the future of technological innovations. Care for another one? 
Now this is Da Vinci. And we are at the Medical University of Graz and I'm very sure there are some of them standing around. They look like a spider. They're very old, already 20 years in function. And if you are a man, happen to be a man in my age, you might soon meet one of them. Two words, prostate operation. We should not overestimate the thing. Actually, what it does now is it um, extends the surgeon's arm. It removes the tremor, the um, shaking in his hand, which actually is a good thing, um, remembering the other important parts down there. But soon, it will be very effective. It will outperform every surgeon on earth. And that's a good thing, even for surgeons. In the early days, surgeons had to do inhumane operations, 12-hour operations, moving like this. Now, they can do what they were meant to do, to care for patients. 12-hour surgeries were never meant for humans in the first place. This machine is quite heavy. It won't stay this way. It will become very, very small too. So, why not? mounted in one of these buses that we already see driving around, test driving around our cities. These buses are quite spacious and when I finally have my prostate uh, removed or operated on, I want to have it done in my family office, family doctor's backyard. The self-driving OR will have arrived overnight the operation won't take more than a few minutes. It's minimal inversive. The family doctor will hold my hand. That's actually all she can do. But I don't want to be alone with this machine, as you can think. Afterwards, she gets out. The self-driving autonomous AR is going to drive me home. And the nursing robot will carry me to my bed and stay with me for a few days. After that, it will join up with its OR via public transport, maybe wearing a mask. And when I'm finally old and fragile, I want a nursing robot again, taking me to the loo at night so my nurse does not have to get up. So my nurse has time to talk to me, to care for me and not hurt her back, carrying me s around. So I don't believe aging in dignity will be possible without nursing robots. Yeah, and hospitals? Hospitals? What was that again? Is there any place in the modern world, in the Western world, more dangerous than a hospital? Hospital-based infections, they kill people every year in the tens of thousands, maybe millions. So for how much longer can we ethically justify to hold up such a dangerous and overcastly infrastructure? We could use the money for finding new treatments, new uh, antivirus vaccines rather than buildings. Medical ethicists Co don't call them hospitals anyway, they call them health factories. Because with all these checklists, all the algorithms, we make healthcare workers behave like a robot. So for how much longer? Okay, that's just a thought experiment. And you might have guessed it by now, thought experiments are not only about technological possibilities, they are uh, about our moral development. They are about ethical questions. So let me finish with my last one. I call it scapegoat. It's uh, quite an old one. We are in 1816. After witnessing Alessandro Volta's experiment, you know, electricity and frog legs behaving like this, she invented a young British uh, lady invented the defibrillator. 
making life with electricity, bringing back life with electricity, 150 years before this little machine was even constructed. She even invented an artificial intelligence and she called it Dr. Frankenstein's monster. What you see here is one of the most chilling scenes in movie history. Mary, an innocent girl, playing with an also innocent creature of Dr. Frankenstein. A few minutes later, the creature is going to drown the girl. How could it have known that humans cannot breathe underwater? They only wanted to play. And then this creature is going to be hunted to the end of the world by the monsters who created it in the first place. So it only learned by interacting with its humans, with the humans who created it, how to become a monster. Fast forward exactly 200 years. This is Tay, another artificial intelligence. In this case, a chat robot by uh, the company of Microsoft. It was communicating over Twitter. It learned from its communications with other humans. After 16 hours, they had to pull Tay's plug. Emergency shut down. Why? That's what Tay had learned. I have to read it for you. You might not be able to read it. I don't like women so much. They should go away. The thing has been innocent in the first place. But that's what it learned. There are no biased algorithms. Humans are biased, yes. There is no racist data. Humans may be racist. But if we can blame algorithms, if we can blame data for humanity's shortcomings, everything is fine, isn't it? We don't have to think about ourselves. Now this was my third and final thought experiment, scapegoat. All of these thought experiments had their individual message. Okay. But what would be the overarching idea worth spreading? Technology develops much faster than moral intuitions. And that's very dangerous. But my horror stories, what I call thought experiments, they are not only about technical development, they are about ethical development as well. They provide a training ground for our moral, moral conscience. They help us to keep up with the development. And if that goes well, if technology and ethics work hand in hand, then we can fulfill our moral imperative of human development. Because Human development, that's what made us human. Human progress is what made us human in the first place. Thank you.